The best text editor is actually NeoVim. Now, a lot of people are like all into programming and go, NeoVim, Titus, really? You've gone full neck beard on this one. And I was like, yeah, I kind of have. I had to grow a beard just to make this video. But NeoVim's really amazing. And for certain things, it can save you minutes of time, multiple times a day for doing just a basic task. That normally, if you use like VS Code and, and copying and pasting everything, it can get really, really time intensive where this would save you a lot. Now, it's not great for everything. Now, most programming, NeoVim is like king, but uh, on some stuff, I don't use NeoVim. So full disclosure here, there's times where I'll use Visual Studio, like Community Edition, if I'm writing a GUI for a Windows program in WinUI 3, for instance. I'm going to need Visual Studio probably to do that. Uh, not even VS Code, but, you know, actual Visual Studio community. And, I, you know, so I go between all of these, and there's times where it just makes sense, and sometimes it doesn't. But more often than not, if I can, I want NeoVim. Uh, but it's hard to set up, and there's a lot of things along my journey I wish I knew sooner. So let me help you jump into here just to add this as another tool to put in your, your, your tool belt. Because if you just rely on Nano for the terminal editor and you're relying on VS Code to just write your stuff, you're really working at a massive disadvantage. And just knowing a few things in here would make your life so much easier. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to say is how not to set up your Vim. <laughs> uh, don't go buy, or, or not buy, but install a distribution for Vim like Lazy Vim, Lunar Vim, uh, NV Chad. There's a lot of them out there. And I always find that they do a lot and they look really cool and they have all these functions. But inevitably, I find myself going, man, I really just need to customize this one thing and I just can't quite do it on a lot of these distributions because they already just do too much and their config files are kind of everywhere. So it's like, okay, let me just do something different and I'll start from scratch. Starting from scratch has its own problems. There's just so much knowledge to know. You're just like, gosh, I just want some basic autocompletes, maybe a spell check, and I'd be on my way. And that's good. Kind of stay away from these other things for starting out. I would recommend Kickstart InVim, which is made by the lead dev of, or one of the devs, I should say, of NeoVim. And it is so darn good. It's a, such a sensible starting spot. He puts everything pretty much in the init.lua file. And if you're learning it for the first time, everything's documented. You're installing the package manager here. You're doing auto completion here. You're getting a useful com uh, plugin for key bindings here using which key. There's everything in under the sun right here. Perfect starting spot. If you want to get something from mine and my customizations, this is what I used for my base, and then I just changed the things I didn't like because, well, I knew what I was changing. So it's a great opener for a beginner. It's going to save you literally a year of time of learning all this stuff. And the other thing is, uh, if you're watching old guides, you got to be careful. One, every Vim book made that I've ever seen is pretty much worthless now. I mean, everybody's using NeoVim 0.9 and above. Regular Vim is a different thing. It uses Vim script instead of Lua. It looks completely different. All that stuff's pretty old. And I, I just don't think that you should get started. If you're starting today, you might as well just learn the new hotness that everyone's on, that everyone loves, and that's really extensible and also faster. So that's why people choose NeoVim, and you're going to want the latest version of NeoVim. So with that out of the way, no old plugins, no old Vim, no old plugin managers and a lot of Vim tutorials online are doing all of those things. So just don't follow them. And frankly, I've made a couple of those videos. So if you see some old Neo Vim video of mine, chances are I'm doing the exact thing I told you not to do because I wasted a lot of my time or maybe not wasted, but I could have saved myself a lot of time by just doing this. Just starting with the Kickstart in Vim, customizing the init file, and then away you go. Now, I also have mine, if we go to ChrisTitus.com or GitHub Chris Titus and then NeoVim, you'll see very much the same. I have my, my old init file from back when I was doing Vim script and some old stuff in here, but really 
everything's in the tightest kickstart. This is using the new hotness with everything lined up with a lot of my customizations. Now, earlier I mentioned how I was saving a lot of time in NeoVim, literally minutes. And I've shown this plugin off before, but man, is it just so great. If you're in like one of these and you open up Vim, let's, let's just quit out. You're in your website and I just type Vim. And I'm like, you know what? I need to get to my last file. My last recent open one was my new editor. Let's say I wanted to add my kickstart, my NeoVim. And I wanted to add like the start screen just, just to give some image, some flair to it. Normally I would save that image. You could upload it if you were using like WordPress and you're just crazy. Or like the case I'm using Hugo and a static site generator, I would save that off into a content directory. And then I'd have to make this whole markdown right here. Not a big deal. You're just pushing it to that directory, but you have to type all this out and it kind of takes some time. So it would be probably a minute of work if you're efficient. If you're not efficient, probably several minutes of work. So let's add my NeoVim and we'll just roll the clock here. How long does it take me to go here for Titus Kickstart? Uh, let's get to an image that I actually want. So I'll have NeoVim, my night NeoVim adventure. Let's say I wanted to, let's get that a little bit more image friendly. And I'm just going to grab all of my NeoVim. And we're going to just toss that into our clipboard. So I've got my image selected. The timer starts now. We'll copy it come over to here and then I'm just gonna go, you know what, run that function and I'm gonna just go clipboard and boom. It grabbed my clipboard, made the file and then put it all in there. And if we look back on our new editor, you can see my NeoVim now has my image of that right in there. That's a lot of time savings just in that one function, which is great. Now, what about other things we can do here? I also got a weird comment on one of my old videos going, why would I use Vim? I'm a sysadmin. The only people that do NeoVim or Vim or neckbeards, I'm just going to use Nano for my terminal. Now, terminal-based commands, I just want to show this basic thing. Let's say I was in a server and I was editing my mounts. So let's go into FS tab. Here's all my mounts. And I had a file with other mounts I needed to import. Now, if you don't have a GUI, you can't just copy and paste and drag those over. But heck, even let's say I have a GUI, the faster way would just be, hey, retrieve this file, drop it in here, and then I'll just kind of clean it up when I get it in here. So let's say I want it right here at the end. I'm just gonna cat home Titus backups FS tab. And this grabs my old FS tab. Well, that's kind of neat. Let's say I want to just, I just need these last five lines. So I need to erase the next 17 lines up. We're just going to delete 19 down and then it removes all those. I had to do that a couple times just because I still suck at Vim motions. And I could have probably done a little bit better if I had referencing. There's still a lot of skills I have to improve on in Vim, even though I've been using it for off and on about a year now or a year, couple years now. And, and it's still like an ongoing uh, learning process, which is kind of neat, man. I, I dig the fact that I can do all this so quickly, especially if I was on a server in terminal, that would have been such a pain in the butt to get all that going. So I wanted to show you those two things and just let you know about Kickstart in Vim. If you're trying to get into Neo Vim, it's a great place to go uh, and start out. My personal Vim file, if you look on here, it does a few things with uh, Copilot. I still like sometimes getting suggestions from Copilot. Hey, let's auto-complete this line, um, a different theme, and just all those little fixes. If you wanted to modify my clipboard and you use Hugo for a website, all two of you people out there that do the same thing as me, uh, by all means, steal from it. But I wanted to, so you have something to compare the original Kickstart in them to my Kickstart. You can kind of see the changes I've made, some quality improvements that I like, but some people are going to like the stock default. So just grab kickstart.invim. If there's something that I'm doing that you want to grab, probably the biggest thing that I was like, I have to have this was the undo tree. Uh, I love that. And also whack of time, just so I can kind of keep track of what I'm doing because I'm kind of all over the place these days with programming over here and 
you know, uh, maybe sometimes I'm just building out a website, writing an article, script, whatever it might be, or just doing sysadmin work. I kind of just run the board. But NeoVim is such an important tool that I don't know what I would do without it. So thank you, NeoVim devs, and thank you for that Kickstart InVim project. TJ, dude, lifesaver, absolutely amazing, um, and it really upped my NeoVim game. I still use VS Code from time to time, depending on what it is, and sometimes Visual Studio Community uh, when I need something kind of graphical. Uh, with like a special library for like .NET or something. But ah, it's so, so cool. And I hope this helps somebody out there learning a new editor. I think uh, learn learn several, you know, before just making your decision go, well, this just works for me. It may, but trust me, it's worth the time investment. At the very least, know what you're missing out on. And hopefully this video helps you. With that, I'll see you in the next one.